My name is Flash Isaac and I'm a teacher from the future. When I was much younger, I saw thousands and thousands of people fail jam and unable to gain admission. This made me travel in time. Now I am back with a Flash Letter Jam app and a series on YouTube tagged 120 Days Jam. My mission is to help you blast jam and as well get justice for everyone who jam has served breakfast. This is episode number 28 of the 120 Days to Jam Chemistry with Flash Isaac. In the next few minutes, we shall be discussing everything you need to know when it comes to solutions and solubility. So long jam is concerned. Solutions, solubility. Solutions or a solution is a homogeneous mixture of two or more substances. Homogeneous or homogeneous mixture of two or more substances. And remember, we agree that mixture is two or more substances physically combined. And homogeneous refers to uniform. So, if we have two or more substances physically combined and this combination is uniform, a solution has been formed. We have two types of solution. The definition that solution is a homogeneous mixture of two or more substances refer to true solution. True solution. Because a solution can be false. A true solution contains solutes and solvents. Therefore, for a true solution, solute plus solvent is equals solution. Now, what is solute? Solute is the one that dissolves in the other. If we have salt, and water. Salt will dissolve in water. So, salt is a solute and water is the solvent. Water is regarded as universal solvent because it can dissolve almost everything in the universe. Water is regarded as universal solvent because most solutes are soluble in water either initially or after a long period of time. Now, a solution where water is the solvent is referred to as aqueous solution. In chemistry, while balancing equation, under some element you see aq. This refers to as aqueous to show that water is the solvent. Now, there are many examples of true solution which we shall get to shortly. False solution, on the other hand, does not contain solute and solvent, or does not contain solute dissolved in uh, solvent. It contains one substance dispersed in another. Dispersed and plus dispersion medium. This will give you because false solution are referred to as colors. So we have the sparse plus the dispersion medium. The dispersion medium is also referred to as disperser medium. So this is combination of phase. In colloids, liquid is not always dissolving or it does not contain every other particles dissolving in liquid. No, you will also see that shortly. Now, true solution is a homogeneous mixture of two or more substances and it does not scatter light. False solution has the ab ab uh, ability to scatter light. That phenomenon is referred to as tinder effect. Tinder effects. The particles making up true solution 
are so small that you cannot see them with your naked eye. You can't even see them with a microscope. If you pour sugar in water and it dissolves completely, no matter how you look, you may not be able to distinguish the sugar or water. Everything blends perfectly. Now, for false solution, the particles are also small. True. However, you can see the size of the particles with a microscope. Suspension is a mixture of undissolved liquids or gases. Suspension are big enough to be seen with the naked eye. Examples of suspension are hamatan gaze and water paint. Just the way for true solution, we have solute plus solvent. For false solution, we have dispersed medium and dispersion medium or dispersal medium. This dispersed medium is the way solute is in true solution. So you can classify this as the solute, you classify this as the solvent for false solution. Let's look at examples of these solutions. Examples of true solution are sugar dissolved in water, salt in water, brine. Brine is a concentrated solution of sodium chloride, which means sodium chloride dissolved in water. But we have more of the sodium chloride than water. Antifreeze is another example of true solution. Antifreeze is simply ethanol in water, which means ethanol in water will form antifreeze. Soda water is carbon dioxide dissolved in water. Carbon dioxide dissolved in water will form soda water, and that is true solution. It has the properties of true solution. Meanwhile, for false solutions or colloids, we have aerosol. Sauce and gels, emotion, smoke, foam, or ladder are examples of colloid. And dispersed medium, like I said earlier, can be likened to be the solute. The dispersion medium can be likened to be the solvent. Therefore, aerosols are formed when liquid dissolves in gas. LG, aerosols, liquid dissolved in gas. Sauce and gels are formed when solid dissolves in liquid, SL. Emulsion are formed or is formed when liquid dissolves in another liquid, LL. Smoke is when solid dissolves in gas. And foam or ladder is when gas dissolves in liquid. Now, the professional way to say it is that aerosols are formed when liquid is dispersed in gas. Sauce and gel, so, solid, dispersed in liquid. Emulsion, liquid, dispersed in liquid. Smoke, solid, dispersed in gas. And foam or ladder, gas, dispersed in liquid. Examples of aerosol are fog, cloud, and mist. Sauce and gel, starch, agar, and gelatin are examples of sauce and gel. The emotion, milk and hair cream. I think paint should also be emotion. We have emotion paint. Ladies and gentlemen, true solution and false solution. Solutions can be saturated, unsaturated, or super saturated. Saturated solution is a solution that contains as much solutes that the solvent can dissolve at that temperature. If we have a temperature of, let's say, 100 degrees Celsius, you have water and you have sugar. If you pour sugar inside water, pour small, water, pour small, it will dissolve. Pour small, it will dissolve. Add, it will dissolve. It will get to a point where, at that temperature, if you add extra sugar to the water, it won't dissolve. You'll be seeing the sugar particles. So, a point where the sugar in water is just enough to dissolve, it is okay. That is the solubility at that temperature. That solution is saturated solution. Now, when a, sol a solvent contains 
less solute that it can dissolve at that temperature, it is said to be unsaturated. Meaning, if you have a bowl of water, you pour small salt inside. If you pour more salt inside, it will still dissolve. But that solution contains less salt than the water can dissolve at that temperature. Because temperature affects solubility. For solids generally, or even liquids, the solubility increases with temperature. For gases, generally, as temperature increases, solubility will drop. So, for gases, temperature drops solubility, except for HCl. For gases, generally, as temperature increases, solubility will reduce, except for HCl, hydrogen fluoride. Now, for gases, as pressure increases, solubility will increase. And nature of substance affects solubility. The three factors affecting solubility are temperature, pressure, and nature of substance for gases. Now, nature of substance. Some gases are generally more soluble than others. For example, ammonia, NH3, and HCl are so, so soluble. They are very, very soluble. In fact, that is the reason they are used in fountain experiment. So, if you are asked, why is HCl and ammonia NH3 used in some fountain experiment? Because they are very, very soluble. Fountain experiment, gases that are very, very soluble are used. For supersaturated solution, the solution contains more solute than the solvent can dissolve at that temperature. If you keep pouring sugar inside water, I'm using this as an example, you keep pouring, 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 it gets to a point where you have more sugar than the water can dissolve. In that case, it is supersaturated. More solute than the solvent can dissolve at that temperature. That takes us to solubility. The solubility of a solute, solute at a particular temperature is the maximum amount of solutes in moles or grams that will saturate 1 dm cube or 1000 cm cube of the solution at that temperature. The aim of solubility is to achieve saturation. We want a solution to contain the uh, number of solutes or amount of solutes that that solvent can dissolve at that temperature. We don't want unsaturated solution or supersaturated solution. Now, the solubility of a solution is simply, or the solubility of a solution at a particular temperature, let's say 100 degrees Celsius, is the maximum amount of solutes in moles or grams. If I give you, I'm heating this as 100 degrees Celsius, this is water, and I pour sugar, sugar on it. Now, the solubility of solute of sugar at this 100 degrees Celsius is the maximum amount of sugar in moles or grams, because amount of substance can be in moles or grams, that we saturate 1 dm cube of the solution at that temperature. The maximum amount of sugar at 100 degrees Celsius that will be enough to saturate 1 dm cube of water. So, if you have 1 dm cube of water, which is equals 1000 cm cube of water, at a particular temperature, how many of this sugar can dissolve it? That is the concept of solubility. So, your solvent can be anything, your solute can be anything. But how soluble your solute is, is the amount of it that can dissolve in the solvent, 1 dm cube volume of the solvent at that particular temperature. As you increase or reduce the temperature, solubility changes. Now, solubility can be in moles per dm cube or grams per dm cube. That shows that solubility is amount of substance per volume. Simple definition. Ladies and gentlemen, any question you are given in jam chemistry, this formula is enough for you to solve all of them. After this class, get the flash learner jam application and begin to answer questions on that solubility. If you open the app, go to chemistry, 
on that year, choose random. On that topic, go to solubility. Click, uh, select all the solubility topics. You only see questions on that solubility. Then you see that this formula and everything I've explained so far are enough for you to answer so many solubility questions. You see, a very big topic treated within a few minutes. Solubility in more per dm cube is equals 1000N over V, where N is number of moles and V is volume. So, solubility, if you are calculating it in more per dm cube, you simply say 1000 times number of moles divided by volume. We know that number of moles is mass over molar mass. So, solubility is equals 1000 times mass divided by molar mass times volume. I am using big M to represent molar mass. So, solubility is 1000N over V or 1000M over MV, which is mass over molar mass times 1000 over volume. This will work if volume is in CM cube. If in the question you are not given volume in CM cube, you are given volume in DM cube, no need to include the 1000. So just say solubility is number of moles over volume or mass over molar mass times volume. This is when volume is given in DM cube. In grams per DM cube, solubility in gram per DM cube is solubility in moles per DM cube times molar mass. So if you remove molar mass from solubility in grams in moles per DM cube, you will get solubility in grams per dm cube. Therefore, solubility in grams per dm cube is 1000 times m, which is mass, over volume. 1000 m over v. This is if volume is in dm cube. If volume is in dm cube, solubility in grams per dm cube is mass over volume. That's all. And in some cases, you will not be given volume. If you know the density of the substance, and the mass of the substance. Density is mass over volume. So volume will be mass over density. Let's take a look at a few questions from the Flash Learners Jam application. Then after the class, you can answer all the questions in the app. So just open the app, play with questions. There are a lot of solubility questions for you there. So many, so many. And if you have issues with any of them, reach me via WhatsApp, Telegram, Facebook, Flash Learners, Isaac, Flash Isaac, Instagram, Twitter, I am Flash Isaac and Flash Dennis. I will attend to you. Apart from the app, apart from academics, sometimes you have the things bothering you. You can't share with your brother, you can't share with your sister, you can't share with anyone. It sometimes pushes you to depression. Something like that, you can always chat me up and talk to me. We are friends. I will always advise you and be your friend. I don't want you to take back steps in life. And I don't want you to commit suicide. I don't want you to be frustrated. So we can always talk and rub mine. And trust you, for so many of my friends I've met, they are teaching. We've been good friends and I've been able to talk to them. A few of them we've only seen one on one to try to talk. That is what life is about. Now let's see. A saturated solution of sodium carbonate. This is soda ash. Contained 60 grams of sodium carbonate dissolved in 500 cm cube of water at 40 degrees Celsius. We don't use the temperature in calculation. We only know that, okay, at 40 degrees Celsius, 60 grams of this solvent was able to dissolve in 500 cm cube of water. So what is the solubility in mole per dm cube and in grams per dm cube? We are given the molar mass of the salt sodium carbonate life is easy for us with this formula you can solve any question at all no matter the grammar in more per dm cube solubility in more per dm cube is equals volume is in cm cube as you can see here 500 cm cube we therefore use the formula and what are we given let's bring out the things we are given mass is equals 60 grams Molar mass is 106 grams per mole. Volume is equals 500 cm cube. So these are the data we have. 
Solubility in mole per diem is mass over molar mass times 1000 over volume. Since volume is in cm cube, this is the same thing as 1000 m over molar mass times volume. We therefore have 60 over 106 times 1000 over 500. That is it. You simply get your answer. If you decide to break this down, here you have two zeros. We go here. Two zeros. We go here. Five divided by five is one. Ten divided by five. This is two. Two divided by two is one. Two divided by one hundred and six. That is uh, fifty-three. If I am correct. So this will therefore give you sixty over fifty-three. In grams per dm cube, grams per dm cube, solubility is equals 1000 m over volume. This is 1000 times mass 60 over volume 500. 500. So this is, yeah, 1, 1000 divided by 500, 2. So that should simply give you. 60 times 2, that is 120 grams per dm cube. So, ladies and gentlemen, questions under solubility are usually very easy to tackle. Now, look at this. 24 grams of copper sulfate dissolves in 500 grams of water to form a saturated solution of 66 degrees Celsius or at 66 degrees Celsius. Calculate the solubility of copper sulfate in moles per dm cube. In moles per dm cube, solubility is mass over molar mass times 1000 over volume. Now, we have mass to be 24 grams. We have molar mass to be CuSO4. Molar mass will be, we are given the mass of copper, 64, 64, plus the mass of sulfur, 32, plus the mass of oxygen is 16, but we have 4 oxygen, so that is 16 times 4. Everything here should give you 160 grams per mole, if I am not wrong. Now, we are given... The volume in grams, that is mass by volume. So, this dissolves in 500 grams of water. Mass of water equals 500 grams. This type of mass needs to be converted to volume. Remember, solubility in moles per dm cube is mass over molar mass times 1000 over volume. So, the mass of water is 500 grams. We know that density is mass over volume. And density of water is 1, which is equals 500 grams over volume. Volume is therefore 500 cm3. What I'm trying to say in essence is that if you are given the volume of water in grams, simply change it to cm3. It is simply the same as cm cube because the density of water is 1. From here, food is ready. You therefore have solubility to be 1000 times mass 24 over molar mass 160 times volume 500 cm cube. From here, food is ready. And take a look at this question. Calculate the maximum mass of crystals that will be obtained from a 20 cm cube solution of Na2CO3.10H2O. This is washing soda because it contains water of crystallization. This guy here is soda ash. The one that contains .10H2O is washing soda. What do we have here? Volume is equals 20 
ATM cube. Solubility is equals 45 grams per dm cube. The solubility at 25 degrees Celsius is 45 grams in one dm cube of water, which means 45 grams per dm cube. That is the solubility. Calculate the mass of M is equals question. These are all we have. Now, the good news for us is that we do not need to calculate molar mass. Why? In grams per dm cube, we don't need molar mass. Solubility in grams per dm cube is equals 1000 m over v. And this is 1000 times mass over volume 20. And solubility is 45. So, this is simply 45 times 20 divided by 1000 is equals the mass. So the value you arrive here will give you the mass. That should be 0 0.9 grams as seen in option C. Simple, right? Yes, simple. Look at this. The solubility of KH CO3 is 0 0.42 moles per dm cube at 25 degrees. Solubility in moles per dm cube is equals 0 0.42 moles per dm cube. Now, what is the mass of KH CO3? Mass is equals question. Volume is 200 cm cube. We are given the molar mass of KH CO3 to be 100 grams per mole. So big M is equals 100 grams per mole. From here, we'll be able to get what we are not given. Solubility in mole per dm cube is given 0 0.42. 0 0.42 is equals 1000 times m. So 1000 times m. We are, that's what we are looking for. Divided by molar mass times volume. So 100 times 200. 100 times 200. That should give us uh, 20,000. So, 20,000 times 0 0.42 divided by 1,000 is equals mass. So, that is the formula or that is how to get your mass. If you solve this correctly, you should get 8.4 grams. That is the mass. Some cases, you will not be given mass or molar mass. You will be given number of moles. If you are given number of moles, food is ready. Number of moles over volume is got to your solubility. So get the flash dinner jam app and solve these other many questions. With that, you are very good to go. And don't forget, solubility in with solubility in mole per dm cube is solubility in grams per dm cube divided by molar mass. If you are given solubility in grams per dm cube and molar mass, to get solubility in mole per dm cube. Simply divide solubility in grams per dm cube by the molar mass. Ladies and gentlemen, yes, that is it.